good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship today. Uh, this Sunday morning at Second Baptist Church, we are so delighted uh, that you all are here with us this morning. It's a beautiful weekend. It's a perfect day to be in church. We're celebrating lots of great things today. Today is our uh, senior, high school senior graduate recognition service. So we are so honored that you are here with us for this this morning. Lots of great music, great word from Jake. It's just going to be a wonderful service. And we're glad that you all could join us online as well. Um, I wanted to make you guys aware that a week, just in a little over a week, we start To Be Leaders Camp. We got about 75 kids coming our first week. And this right over here becomes our dining hall during the weeks of To Be Leaders. We serve from the kitchen just like you guys eat on Wednesday nights. And because there are so many kids coming this year each week and it takes so much time, we have decided we're going to leave our dining hall set for the entire five weeks of camp. So you guys will also get to enjoy a little bit of To Be Leaders Camp with us. Uh, at the end of each week, I'm going to put some little art displays or maybe some pictures on the table so y'all can see what we do all week long during To Be Leaders and be just a little bit exhausted with the rest of us, right? So thank you for your grace and letting us keep the tables up during those five weeks. Also, would like to make you aware, just two weeks from today, we will have one combined special service, June the 4th, right here. Shouldn't affect y'all very much, but we'd like to know that you're going to have some ways to participate in that service. So check your bulletin for ways that you can um, bring items from home to be part of our special service on the June the 4th. Now, let's just take a moment, take a deep breath with me. Let's prepare for our worship service today. The Lord be with you. Now I invite you as you're able to stand for the call to worship this morning. <laughs> Beloved, let us worship God. Let us give praise to God, the one who Parent to orphans and protector of widows. As God led the Israelites through the wilderness and provided for them, the rider in the heavens speaks throughout creation. We gather to listen and ascribe power to God. Awesome is God in the sanctuary of creation. Blessed be God. Amen.
Would you please pray with me? Lord, as we invite you into this time, in this time of celebration and send off, Lord, we pray that your presence would be felt. We pray, God, that the love and compassion that you give to each and every one of us unconditionally would be known. We pray that as you work in our lives, our hands and arms would work in a world to bring them to peace, to a place of love. Lord, thank you so much for this gift. Come and be a part of this with us, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. front for children's time and I would like to invite our graduating seniors to be the bookends of our children's time so you sit on either end of our stage here please good morning
morning, everyone. We're going to try and squeeze in on these blue steps if we can. Right in here. Come on, Hank. Come on, Clark. Right over here. Nice. Right over in here. Yeah, perfect. Oh, Clark. There we go. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I'm, oh, come on in. Darcy, right on here. Yep, that's perfect. Right there in front of your sister. There we go. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks for coming to children's time today. Um, uh, today is a special day. Our, our seniors are um, fixing to graduate high school, and we're celebrating them today. But you guys are a big part of what they have been through all through at Second B, right? And I wanted to talk to you a little bit as I was thinking about graduation. Many of you in preschool praise, I've been in there and I've done some of these puzzles with you, right? I've, I've done them. Does it matter? If we were to start this puzzle today, does it matter which puzzle piece I wanted to start with? Would, it, would the puzzle be wrong if I started with this one? Okay, would the puzzle be wrong if we started with this one? No. Would it be okay if we started with this one? Why? What does it matter? Why, what is, why doesn't it matter which puzzle piece I start with? We're still going to get to what? Okay. We're still going to build it, right, Audrey? We're going to get to the same result. And I was thinking about you guys graduating and you guys heading into summer, getting ready for a whole new school year or maybe starting school next year. And I thought about puzzle pieces. And you know, one of the things these high school seniors are going to figure out when they leave here is that it doesn't matter which puzzle piece they start with. They're still going to end up where they need to be in the end. And it's just like you guys. So we can make lots of different choices on our puzzle pieces because they're all going to come together in one big right puzzle at the very end, and it's all going to make sense in the end. So here's the thing. We all have a path that we're going to follow. You guys are going to take lots and lots and lots of winding roads, and these guys know because they're already on the same path, right? And it doesn't matter which one you start with, you're still going to get to be in the end where we are so proud for you to go. Yes, Eva? My mom likes starting with the corners. I like to start with the corners too because it makes it easier to do. So those of you that are working on when you go to college, start in the corners, get your four corners figured out first, and then the middle will just jumble all and come together in the end. And no matter what your puzzle looks like, when you're finished, we know that we're going to be so proud of the picture that you made. Um, boys and girls, I'm going to give you a puzzle. You can draw whatever picture on it you want. To. Maybe you want to draw something during worship. Maybe you want to save it for when you go home. Graduating seniors, I'm going to give you one that you can leave in your chairs because you won't want to put those on stage with you. But remember that your puzzle pieces are all blank for now, and it starts here. And as I hand out these puzzle pieces, can we say a quick prayer together? And then you guys will either go back to your parents or to preschool praise. God, we thank you for... Um, for these students who have led the path, um, for these littles in front of us, God. And we thank you for an open road and a blank slate that they all start on again at the end of this year. And God, we thank you for the love that you have for each one of us. And we thank you for the love that we get to share on others. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You guys may go back to your seat. honored that I get to start off uh, this Senior Recognition Sunday. Um, all the seniors are going to get to talk, and we're going to get to talk a little bit about them. But one of the seniors that I feel most honored to speak of is uh, Shannon McAllister. Um, Shannon, I was here when you were born. I fell in love with you from the very beginning, and this church um, was part of your family, as your family had been part of this church for years and years. And I watched you grow for about eight years, and I feel like we were ripped a little bit as you guys were pulled away for a job for I don't know, five or six years. We missed a good chunk of your life, but we know that your family has done such great things with you. And it all started here in this church and at Faith. And we can see what your, your family is, a beautiful family that loves you. Your mom and your dad, Greg and Meredith, your sister, Kristen, and your brother, Caden. Such a wonderful family that we all have come to know and love. Y'all, Shannon is a senior at Lubbock Cooper High School. And I'm sorry today that she has laryngitis. And we're going to give her a chance to rest because she has a very big speech to make this week. She is valedictorian of her senior class. <laughs> I know as a teacher that those grade points are so close together, so for her to come out 
valedictorian on top is a huge feat. And we are very proud of the, the upbringing that you've had from your family and from this church. And we are very proud of your faith. And we know that when you go into college, you're going to take this church family with you. And you're going to learn new things and have new adventures. And we get to watch you through your family too. So thank you for being part of our church. I'm very proud to know you. <laughs> My name is Josh. I have the joy and priv privilege of serving in our student ministry here at Second B. And I just wanted to take a couple minutes and speak to the seniors and just my interaction with them. And I'll start with you, Mason. You know, Mason, you have always been the guy I could count on that whenever I throw out a Bible question or ask something and I get the stares back, just like, okay, after about five seconds of a pause, Mason will be like, I think this. I'm like, he gets it going. He takes that step out there and gets us moving in the right direction. And I'm thankful for that, Mason. Will, you bring in a gentle, easy spirit. There is no having to pretend for me to be someone I'm not to try to impress, impress you or get in your good graces. You're just a genuine guy. And it's not just me that feels that, but that is flowing throughout our ministry. And when we have middle schoolers that may come in, they're like, golly, this is kind of intense and wild. You just help bring that anxiety level down. And I'm thankful for that. Reagan, your joyful smile has always brought joy to me. Reagan, your just attitude of we can do this, we can make this happen. It is just moved within me too. It's like, yeah, there may be things out there that it seems almost insurmountable, but we can do this. We can absolutely do this. And so as I think of all of you seniors, what I'd like to say too is that you have certainly embodied the spirit of Second Baptist Church. I, I don't know if I still am or not, but I was the new guy. I was coming in, following someone, had done a great job, very different than them, sounded different than them. I was the new guy. I was different. But y'all did not hold that against me or even push me out to the side. You said, hey, come and be a part of our group and let's get to know each other. And I would just tell you, second B, that is the life of the church here. That even if you are different, even if you think differently or have some different views on things, this is a place that you are welcome to be. And so I thank you for that and for my family. And now my friend Jordan is gonna come up here and he's gonna say a few words too. Hey seniors, um, I'm Jordan. I've been able and had the opportunity to work with our youth for several years now. I've gotten to see them grow up and grow in their faith and go from very small to very tall and very strong. Um, it's, it's been like one of the highlights of my life to be able to be here for them. Um, so thank you for letting me speak and uh, be able to honor them a little bit. Um, my problem when I was trying to figure out what to say is I've realized to be youth is like a TV show. Um, and it's hard to just pick a character out from a TV show people haven't seen and try to explain things with no context. Um, but I'm gonna do my best. Um, I'm gonna start with Will. Um, just like Josh said, he's a, a go with the flow, relaxed kind of guy. He always manages to make me laugh. It's wonderful. Um, and when we're planning for youth events and youth games, one of the things Josh asks me a lot is, is Will going to break this game? <laughs> is he just going to win in 10 seconds? Because <laughs> um, Will is good at everything. <laughs> um, and it's not an over-exaggeration. If there's any athletic thing or anything, he is amazing at it. Um, and one of my favorite memories of him is when we went to youth camp. And, you know, when you go to youth camp and you have all these different churches and all these different youth groups, you try to, like, find your place. Um, like, what, what does our church do well? Um, and I think we'd been like the family church, like we are the closest church. But Will's first year there, we became the athletic church. We were the jocks. <laughs> um, Will put on this straw hat, um, and for some reason that made him 10 times better at basketball. And we wiped the floor with everybody. It was amazing. <laughs> um, and Will has not been here as long as everybody else, but he has become like such an important part of our youth group. I can't even really imagine what youth was like before Will. Um, and I'm thankful every time I get to walk in and see him because his spirit and his joy is infectious and he brings this spirit of competition. Um, Reagan, 
She is the greatest number one Taylor Swift fan. Um, there is no, <laughs> um, no arguments about that. Um, our actual slogan for the youth group is whatever Reagan wants. That is the, um, if you have a problem with it, it's trademark Jake Maxwell. Um, so I don't know how to help you with that one. Um, just like everybody else has said, Reagan has joy in her smile and in her eyes and she's able to help people feel like they belong and she's kind of the boss. Um, one of my favorite memories of Reagan is um, I have the opportunity to babysit multiple kids um, throughout the week and one of the treats that we get to do is we get to go to Soda Shack um, and Reagan is the very best worker at Soda Shack um, and she's also been a counselor and she will be a counselor for 2B Leaders um, and 2B Leaders uh, the campers and the counselors get to have this special bond and this special relationship um, that's like nothing else that I've ever seen. Um, so I told them, hey, we're going to go to Soda Shack and we're going to see Reagan. And they got really excited to see Reagan. Um, and of course, it's a drive through um, and it's, we don't get to go inside and we go, don't get to see them. And Reagan's obviously at work. So I really thought like she was just going to say, hi, um, and that would be perfect. Um, but actually, she wasn't working the window. So she went and she asked the person, hey, can I work the window really fast? Um, and she had me roll the window down for the kids so that they could order for themselves. Um, and they made it, she made it this very special little thing for them. Um, and that just shows the light that Reagan puts to other people. Um, and I'm thankful to have been able to experience that. And Mason, <laughs> he's going to be my last one. Um, I've known Mason for 10 years now because this is the 10th year of 2B Leaders. Um, I remember walking into 2B Leaders my first day, um, and I had never been to this church before, and it was very scary. Um, and Cheryl's at her little table. Um, maybe you'll see it. We'll sometimes leave it out. Um, and she was like, okay, Jordan, all the other counselors are in the youth room. And I was like, I don't know what that means or where that is. <laughs> um, so she was like, okay, uh, Mace, can you take him in there? And here comes this little kid, Mace, <laughs> um, little second grader. He's like, hi, I'll take you to the youth room. He just kind of trudges along. Um, you know, it's a really humbling experience when uh, the second grader that was like a quarter of your size can now lift three times your weight. Um, Mason's a power lifter and I went to one of his powerlifting meets and I uh, didn't know really what to expect because I'd never been to a powerlifting meet. Um, and he can lift three Jordans pretty easy. Um, so I wouldn't make him mad if I were you. Uh, but Mason is very dependable. He's here. Um, he probably has more hours at the church than I do, even though I've been here working for a long time. Um, he's super strong, as I've mentioned, but also uh, don't let your, his strength fool you. He's also very intelligent. Um, he's one of the most intelligent people I know. He can argue just about anything, and he loves to argue just about anything. <laughs> um, and part of that dependability um, and uh, my story for Mason is um, I also get to visit the youth kids at their jobs, like I said, for Reagan. And we have some like great jobs that they work at because Mason also works at Jay's Creamery. Um, so there's a lot of sweets and a lot of sugar. Um, so I was going to go visit him and I brought my friend. Um, his name was Pedro and we went to Jay's. Um, and I just ordered the most like plain Jane thing. I just get vanilla ice cream with sprinkles on it. <sighs> Mason. <laughs> um, so my friend gets this chocolate uh, super fudge thing and they, they bring it out and they call my name Jordan. Um, and Mason brings it to the front, and it, he hasn't put the sprinkles onto my uh, ice cream yet, but for whatever reason, but he brought the sprinkle thing, and he gives my friend his order, and he says, okay, Jordan, just tell me when you want me to stop. And he just starts going, and I'm like, okay, Mace, you can stop. Okay, Mace, you can stop. Okay, Mace. He's like, you know when you go to Olive Garden and you say to stop and they don't stop? And he just kept going. Um, and I was like, you know what, Mason, you can just go until you're satisfied. <laughs> Um, that started a terrible trend. Um, somehow Mason puts more sprinkles in every single time, and I think we started with half an inch of sprinkles. Um, so I probably ate my body weight in sprinkles by now. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> but it's my favorite memory uh, with Mason. Um, and as I come to a close here, um, these youth kids are truly spectacular. They all just excel in everything, um, whether it be their walk with Christ, how they treat people, um, their intelligence, their athleticism, everything. Um, and I just know that like these uh, youth, well, these people, they're just some of the most amazing people that I'll ever have the chance to meet, and they're truly going to change the world. Thank you, seniors.
Well, you've had a chance to hear from us and what they mean to us, but let's give them a chance to come up and speak and hear what we mean to them. So, Reagan, you want to come up and say a few things? Okay. Good morning. I have been attending Second B for almost 10 years now. Growing up in this church has given me so many opportunities to grow in my faith and has given me a great community of support. I have many fond memories of my time at Second B. I have participated in music and arts camp, children's camp, youth camp, to be leaders camp. Basically, if there was a camp at Second B, I was there. Going to these camps and attending all of the youth activities has become one of the biggest blessings in my life. I found community around like-minded people and created many amazing friendships that is built around our love for Jesus. But it's not just the memories that I remember. It is the people at this church that has impacted me the most. For example, I remember how Dee Stotts let us decorate cookies at her house, and how I learned kitchen survival skills with Johnny, and how I could always count on Jordan with a big sign made just for me at my events. I'd like to say a shout out to Savannah, who I know is watching online, for being an integral part of helping me to grow and become a Christian. I want to say thank you to Jake, Cheryl, Josh, Jordan, and Madison for investing in not only my life, but the lives of all the youth. Y'all have taught us lessons that, we will, that will stay with us for the rest of our lives. Lastly, thank you to my fellow seniors who keep me laughing and keep me humble. I know I can speak for all of us when I say Second B will always be our church home. As we step into this new chapter of our lives, we will carry with us the love, support, and prayers from this church. Thank you again for all y'all have done. Is it? I stand here today to spread my deep gratitude for Second Baptist and the community surrounding it today surrounding it today, for not only welcoming me these past two years, but also serving as a second family to me. As I recount some of the many memories I've made in this church, I truly see the impact that Second Baptist has made on me. As I embark on the next chapter of my life, I carry these cherished memories and invaluable lessons I've learned. Our graduation is not just a milestone to celebrate, it's a stepping stone into our future. I'm confident that the seeds of faith and the values instilled in me within this church will guide me as I navigate the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. From learning leadership with Jordan and Second Baptist leaders and to be leaders to competitive volleyball games where sometimes I do need to learn a little humility. With the youth group, each moment within this church has continued to lead me on a positive path within my faith. I want to formally thank Josh, Jordan, Savannah, Madison, and my fellow seniors for making memories with me and also guiding me on a path of success and towards my graduation. Thank you, Second Baptist. Good morning. Um, I think this morning has been a little nerve-wracking for some of us, whether it's you know graduation this week or speeches giving at church in front of all y'all, but um, we're just glad to be here. So, um, And I've seen a lot of people stand on the stage on Sunday mornings, on graduation um, senior Sunday, uh, including my two older brothers, um, and we just are so grateful that we have such an amazing church that will celebrate us and um, honor us. So, um, since I was a little kid, Second Baptist Church has always been a second home, like Will and Reagan have both said, so that speaks to how true this church is. Y'all are all amazing. Um, and y'all have just embraced me for the person I am and have welcomed me with open arms. Our congregation isn't just a gathering of church members, but rather a part of my extended family, as so many of y'all have um, had such an impact on me and have taken part in raising me. Memori memories of decorating Christmas cookies at Vicky and Bobby's house, um, Going to Sunday school to learn about Bible stories and making arts and crafts, where many of y'all have taught me and had a role in those Sundays. Um, <clears throat> going to cinnamon roll parties at the Linduskis, and meals and time with so many of y'all has just it's been so amazing, and I know I'll cherish those, those uh, moments. I'm so blessed to be a part of such a special church, as I've learned countless lessons about love and compassion for others, lessons of faith and what, a Christ, and what a Christian, being a Christian actually means. The influence of this church extends far beyond the walls of this building. Second Baptist has been so inspiring to me and encourages me to dream big and make a positive impact in the world around me. 
I'm so thankful for the great examples and encouragement that my, both my parents have given for me and my two loving brothers. I'm just, I wouldn't be the person I am without them today. I'm also grateful for the guidance of Pastor Jake and Pastor Ryan. Um, I've learned so much, so much from them. Um, and then from all of my youth ministers, from Tara to Savannah and now Josh, I'm just, I'm grateful for all that they did for us. Um, they're true leaders and they show us what, what we need to do every day to be good Christians. Um, and I'm extremely thankful for what Jordan has done in my life. There's too many things to count. Um, I'm just so grateful for all of the long trips you've made me. He didn't tell y'all, but he drove like six hours, seven hours for a powerlifting competition. That's crazy. So, um, and then I'm grateful for Madison. Even though she's been here for a couple of months, and she's, she's shown me um, some encouragement, some support. Um, lastly, I want to thank all of our congregation, um, youth members, all of y'all. Y'all are so meaningful to all four of us. I know y'all have made a big key impact in all of our lives, um, and we, we just are so grateful. Um, I want to thank y'all for everything y'all have done for us, and we, we love y'all. So thank you. And thank you guys for your kind words. That was very meaningful, very important to us. As we get ready to say this graduation litany over you, we will do this as a church to bless you. There's something that I have for you. We have a gift for you on behalf of our church, and what we are sending you out with is a Bible. But there's something very special about this Bible. This Bible has two columns on the right for you to take notes. And so what I ask you to do as you go with God, as you grow, as you see his word, write down what he's speaking to you. I thought uh, maybe I'll get you a study Bible, but I was like, no, I'm going to get you something where you can interact with what God's telling you. And so we have these for you. And I will say this to parents very quickly before we do this. As hard as this may be, let go and let them go out and make some mistakes. I think Jake will talk a little bit more about that here in just a minute. But second B, would you go through, would you grab your order of worship and let's read this graduation litany of blessing over our grads. Each one of you is a special part of this congregation. No one else in the whole world is quite like you. We're proud of you and we love you. We bless you to grow in body, mind, and spirit, even if the consequences are difficult and painful. We challenge you to explore life, to be adventurous, to discover who God has created you to be. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek God's will in all you do, and God's will direct your path. We promise to support you, love, counsel, and prayers continue to walk with you in your journey of faith with God. Today's uh, psalm reading is from Psalm 68, verses 1 to 10 and 32 to 35. 
Let God rise up. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. A smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity. But the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel, rain in abundance. O oh God, you showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the needy. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. O rider in the heavens, the ancient heavens, listen. He sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God in his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. The word of God for the people of God. Holy Spirit, fall fresh upon us. Divine and Holy Spirit, fall fresh upon your beloved children here and in all the earth. Holy, divine, and good spirit, fall fresh upon us in healing, hope, grace, and joy. This very moment and unto the end of the age. In the name of the Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand.
This morning's uh, epistle reading is from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 14. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Will this be on the test? Educators around the world, or at least in this part of the world, are celebrating a season in which maybe they won't have to answer that question. Will this be on the test? First Peter here in our text, in our Holy Scriptures, mentions a test. And to be honest with you, it's a at least a spiritual concept that I struggle with. It is certainly one that is present in our scriptures and therefore worth our attention. I suspect that the biblical audience first reading this letter or collection of sermons did not yet quite struggle with the concept of test as I might. However, I do do believe that education is a wonderful model for us spiritually. The disciples... Seemingly a Christianese-like word. The disciples are students. They are learners. And as I understand in the biblical setting, that test is less of pass-fail. That test is not a graduational... I just made up a word. See what you can do? Test is not a graduational term, rather test, at least in a healthy spirituality, is a formational term. Yeah, formational. I believe this is a wonderful model as we consider our religious, our spiritual, our Christian education. That what we might need in life, our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our soul, is not necessarily more information. That's graduational. But what we need each and every day is to be nudged, if even just a little, towards greater formation. That each day we might be more formed into that image of Christ, which is first and deepest within. And this is a struggle, I believe, and maybe one of the great struggles for the modern, western, post-enlightenment church, myself included. Maybe one definition of education consistent with our scriptures is that we might die to what we think we know in order that we might be, that we might die to what we think we know in order that we might be formed. Now, First Peter uses this concept of test in such a way that connects uh, the original readers, the original hearers, connects those experiencing great suffering, likely at the hands of the Roman Empire, and connects these hearers, suggesting that as you encounter this tremendous difficulty, this suffering, this injustice, as you encounter such, and as the Christ 
encountered such, particularly on the cross, that those receiving these original words and even the church today might take heart that even God's presence is with you, maybe even particularly when we encounter such difficulty. James, maybe the brother of Jesus, and it says it this way, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials, same word there as First Peter uses, translated test, when you, when you face trials of many kinds, I will admit to you that this scripture is a difficult one for me. It's up there right along with uh, be anxious in nothing. Pray continually. Love your enemies. Sell all your possessions and give it away. I know that you all have graduated from such difficult teaching, but I am still a work in progress. Maybe one of the great differences between our moment is that we do not encounter such organized, such empire that persecutes Christians, as has been for other religious traditions even throughout history, as was a part of the occasion of the writing of the New Testament. We give thanks to God. At least I give thanks to God for the very comfortable and blessed life that I have lived, not wondering about what some empire will do to my community of faith just for gathering for worship. Therefore, it takes some interpretive moves here to receive this word in First Peter. And although this is certainly not the same as organized persecution, there is suffering there is tremendous difficulty that we all encounter. Now, in my observation, in my experience, there is not one this morning within earshot. There is not one among us who will not directly uh, spend extended seasons of suffering and difficulty due to addiction, depression, cancer, dementia, and infertility. Last Sunday alone, Mother's Day, celebrating that incredible and divine feminine spirit is also a tremendously difficult day. And this is why we look to the Christ. For in the Christ who suffered, for in the Christ for which there is much room, it is possible for hopeful joy and hopeful grief to exist at the same time. A physician in our church recently sent me an article that suggested that five, uh, five-year-olds alive today, of which we have one, half of five-year-olds alive today will live to see 100 years old. Thanks be to God for the modern miracle we call medicine and for those who practice it. Yeah. It's incredible to be alive. I don't know that this world is ready for our five-year-old to go 100. <laughs> this very week, and I encourage you to take your prayer card right now throughout the rest of this boring sermon and write a birthday card to Bob Kaiser who turns 99 years old, currently living in the diaspora known as the Metroplex, but very much a member of our church. Half of five-year-olds will live to their 100. And all, all of us will experience the difficulty of what it means to be alive. Life is real. Life is raw. These sufferings and difficulties are sure. But I am convinced, this is my opinion, that they are not tests. At home, in our backyard, we grow really world-class dirt. <laughs> now, amongst the dirt that we grow, occasionally we will plant dandelion weeds. 
And one evening, a few weeks ago, Allison was at work. We have we're very fancy, bougie. We've got two swings in our backyard. I had two children on two different swings. And pushing the kids on the swings, in between pushes, I, I would occasionally bend over to grab a weed out of our dirt. And I'm hoping there are no city officials here that will report me. But occasionally I'll pick up a weed and just toss it into the alleyway. I'll pick it up later, okay? Okay. And Eva says to me, our five-year-old says to me, why are you picking out, why are you picking, she calls them flowers. Why are you picking out those flowers? I said, baby, these are actually weeds and and they're not good for the grass. To which she said, we don't have any grass. (laughs) Kidding. I said, they're actually weeds, baby, and, and, and I'm pulling them out of the yard because they're not good for the grass. And as you well know, Eva said, Why? I said, you know, I'm not not really sure why why the weeds aren't aren't good for the grass. To which she said, Dad, if God loves us so much, why, why did God create weeds that kill grass? And I got out my phone. And, and she said, she said, God, well, 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 I'm thinking about it, Dad. Why did God make mosquitoes? And I said, I don't, I don't know, baby. I don't know. And she said, why are you looking at your phone when I'm asking you these questions? And I said, baby, we have this app, and I can tell where your mom is, and I'm seeing how far away she is from home, and she will answer all of these questions for you when she arrives. And I'd like to say some words to you that are very meaningful to me and very freeing for me. I imagine they've been very meaningful for you and freeing for you. But the longer that I live, the more I don't know. And the longer that I live and the more that I don't know, I suspect the point of life is not to know the answers The point of life is not to pass the test. We live in a world that suggests you need to know the answers. We live in a world that says you've got to graduate. And and I think you don't. You don't have to know the answers. And you don't have to graduate. Rather, you are invited to be formed. Just a little bit. Each day, a little bit more into that image of Christ, first and deep within about 15 years ago to the very month, there was a monastery of Christ in the desert in Abiquiu, New Mexico, spending a few weeks in what I will call heaven, which I was assigned to work with the Franciscans in the Benedictine hop field, 14 feet tall, surrounded by hops, the kingdom of God on earth. And this Franciscan monk says to me, Jake, there's something very, very important you need to learn in your two weeks here. He said, we will spend the next two weeks picking weeds by hand out of this garden, out of this hops field. And what you need to know is that we are picking the weeds out of this garden, not because it's good for the garden or good for the hops. He said, we're picking the weeds out of this garden because it's good for our souls. Fifteen years later, and I'm, I'm still not really sure what that means. And a couple weeks ago, pushing our children, I leaned over, and my hands got dirty, and I was reminded of the Christ who spent an entire life in ministry bowing, kneeling, hands in the dirt down low with those who were sick and lame and kept down low. (laughs) The greatest sermon ever preached in all of human history, the Sermon on the Mount. And it begins by saying, Jesus sat down. (laughs) And every week I'm reminded, I come up here and stand up. About five years ago, I was gathering near our youth who sat over here at the beginning of worship and we were visiting. 
And it about came time to go to the back of our sanctuary to, to process with our pastors and, and our liturgical participants. And, and an eighth grader said to me, don't mess up. <laughs> Savannah laughed so loud and awkwardly, she interrupted Larry playing gathering music. And I said, I, 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 I said excuse me? And she said, you know, you're about to go up there and do that thing that you do, like, don't mess up. Reagan Whipke, an eighth grader. (laughs) And nearly every Sunday since then, about 400 Sundays, she walks past us pastors in the back, and she looks at me and she says, don't mess up. (laughs) Preached all of youth camp last summer. Every day she said to me, don't mess up. And these words have now, ironically, become words of encouragement, words that I treasure. Shannon, Mason, and Will, and Reagan, we are so proud of you. We are impressed by you. And I would like to share some words with you, and by extension, some words to our congregation. Words that I believe are the exact opposite of the words of Reagan Whipke. Listen to me very clearly. Go mess up. 2020. As a congregation, we were preparing to celebrate the feast of the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, whom we call the Christ. For the first time in the history of our church, we would do so online. And for many of you, I suspect it's the first Easter you ever spent not inside a house of worship. It was certainly the first time in our professional life serving a church. You know, sometimes on Sunday mornings, I get this jealousy driving to church. I see these people riding their bikes and running. So Easter Sunday morning, 2020, Allison was eight months pregnant and we went for a walk. And we were most of the way down 75th Street, and Eva was on a bike ahead of us. Earlier in the week, I had scheduled a very spiritual, a very thoughtful, a very meaningful text message to go out to all of our congregation on Easter Sunday morning. And so there we were on Easter Sunday morning on our, on our walk, and Allison's phone and my phone simultaneously, at the same time, all of your phones, ding. It was a very thoughtful, spiritually encouraging text message from the pastor to all of the congregation. And Allison pulled out her phone and she opened up the message and she starts laughing. And she looks at me and she says, did you write this? I said, what are you you talking about? Of course I wrote this. I'm the pastor of the church. So I get my phone out and I open it up and there's three words written from the pastor. Easter Sunday morning, Christ is rise. (laughs) And in 2021 and in 2022 and in 2023, and I'm certain from every year henceforth, but for the last three years on Easter Sunday morning, Allison and I have looked at one another with smiles on our faces and joys in our hearts and mistakes on our lips, we've said to one another, Christ is rise. <laughs> and so I say to you, go, go mess it up. And I'm speaking metaphorically because I, I, have, I have messed up some things that we, for many reasons, cannot outline here. Life is not a test. Life is not a set of answers. Life, I believe, in faith is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to get it wrong. It's an opportunity to not know. It's an opportunity to struggle and, yes, even suffer, which is mysterious and difficult. But in my experience, 
as I understand the history of our world and as I understand the story of our scripture, every time we mess it up, every time I mess up, every time the whole thing gets messed up, the grace of God whispers, Christ is rise. Rise indeed. Amen. I invite you to stand and continue to worship. Join me in prayer, please. God, most gracious and loving, we give thanks for this day and this congregation. We celebrate with joy and thanksgiving each day you provide and the bounty therein. Today we lift our voices in song and prayer to praise your power and glory. You sent our Lord Jesus of Nazareth, who conquered death and reconciled us to your love and forgiveness. Now with joy let us give freely of our time, talents, and money that we may share the good news. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I invite you to stand and celebrate this peace together.